We're joined on the phone today by Ian Hill. He's the founder and bassist for Judas Priest. They've got a show coming up in Minneapolis, September 23rd at the Armory. Ian, how's it going today? Dustin, hiya, how you doing? I'm doing excellent. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, no problem. Pleasure. (laughs) Well, I know Judas Priest is back on the road. Uh, First of all, how's the tour been going for you so far? Oh, so far so good. Yeah, it's early days yet, but um, but yeah, it's going great. It really is, especially in the in, in light of current situation. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely great. Uh, everything's kind of getting back to normal here, and and uh, you're coming uh, back to Minneapolis on uh, September 23rd at the Armory. You know, I saw Judas Priest when when you guys came through uh, last time. You guys sound great as always, and I think that's a great venue for you guys. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember the Armory. Yeah, it's a great venue. Um, yeah, we, 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 you know, we've, we've all had loads of friends in, uh, up your neck of the woods, you know, so, uh, it's, it's always a pleasure to come and play. Well, one thing I noticed, uh, for the new tour here, you guys have uh, dusted off some gems. Uh, the fans haven't seen you play in a long time. That's awesome. Yeah, we, uh, we, we always try and, um, to try and put a few surprises in, you know, uh, it's, it's always difficult when you come to do a, a set list, you know, because, um, you, you've got so much to choose from. But uh, you, you have to keep, obviously, fans' favourites in. Um, so you, if you've got a limited uh, time span there to fit other stuff in. But there's stuff, I mean, we, we bought in Rock and Roller from the first album. We thought that was kind of relevant, seeing as we're, uh, we're um, uh, you, you know, celebrating 50 years and all. And all. So um, we put that one in. Um, Invader, I think. That one's in there, and so is uh, One Shot at Glory. And there's, there's two or three other songs, you know, they haven't played for a while, you know. So, um we, we, like I say, we, we like to throw a few surprises in and can keep um, one tour as, as different as we can from another one. You guys obviously have enough. Uh, if you're not careful, you can end up with a four-hour show you know, after put everything in there. Yeah, not anymore. We can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. I, I mean, you, you, you can. I, I can remember oh, in the early days, you know, when you've only got two or three albums to choose from and, and you think, well, oh, yeah, one day we'll be able to have a, a whole set list of um, of, of the singles and, and the set openers. And we can't even do that anymore, you know, there's just too many of those. So <laughs> we have to pick and choose, especially if you want to put uh, put new material in that you haven't done for a while, you know. So uh, every new song you put in, you, you're pretty much dropping somebody else's favorite, you know. Well, and I imagine uh, for you guys, as long as you've been around and, you know, the amount of music you've put out, uh, some of these songs m- might be new to you even uh, when you go back and, and listen to some of these earlier albums. Oh, absolutely. You, you know, I mean, I, I, my brain's only so big. <laughs> I can only remember so many uh, so many bass lines, you know. So um, when, when the, the, the older material comes out that we haven't played for a while, it's, um, you know, it's back in my studio at home and, and picking out the bass lines to that, you know, and refreshing my memory. And again, uh, Judas Priest will be at the Armory in Minneapolis on September 23rd. And Ian, I want to talk to you a bit about the uh, the new box set, 50 heavy metal years of music, uh, 42 discs. Uh, I mean, it can't get much more metal than that. No, no. The, the, uh, the, the, I think the, the, the working, you know, the operative was just to throw everything at it. <laughs> uh, there's, there's, there's some new material on there as well, stuff that hasn't been heard. Some um, well, live material, as you say, not, not new songs, but um, there's some new not live material that came to light um, that was passed for fit for human consumption by our long-standing producer, Tom Allen, who went through it, you know. Um, uh, and everything else, you know, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a complete catalogue of the band's career, you know, from the very first album right the way through to Firepower. And um, and like I say, there's there's a lot of live stuff on there as well. It also includes for the first time the the, uh, the, the Ripper albums as well. Um, for the first time, you know, all, all in the box set together. So, yeah, it's an epic. <laughs> Definitely. And I love that all the live shows are available there. You know, it's great to be able to to hear how the band's live shows, you know, as you mentioned, kind of changed and evolved over the years. I mean, you guys have been uh, through a lot over the past 50 years. That, that's right. Yeah. I mean, it would, even, even one live show that we did, I don't know, 20 years ago, uh, we're doing the same songs today, but they're, they're still slightly different. You, you know what I mean? There won't be a different start, a different ending. Uh, different lead break in there uh, and it's it's interesting just to see how things evolve as uh, as you go along so it's always um like i say it's always interesting to to hear the older live stuff as well 
Well, Ian, you have been in Judas Priest longer than anyone at this point. Uh, this box set and the 50th anniversary tour, all this must be extra special for you looking back. Yeah, it is. Who'd have thought it all those years ago? Um, you know, people say, did you ever think you'd be doing it when you're, when you're knocking 70? <laughs> uh, back when we started, I mean, the, the concept of a popular musician still eking out a living, you know, at their age just didn't exist. I mean, even the the old rock and rollers were still in their 40s, you know, the crooners were still in their 50s and 60s. Um, and like I say, the thought of uh, someone carrying on for 50 years and and doing it at our age was uh, was something novel, you know. And it's uh, it's great to, to have been able to make it and still enjoy it and still be relevant, you know. Definitely. And you are still putting out... Um awesome albums i know especially now that uh richie faulkner's in the band uh, the last couple albums have been great and i know um there's a new album in the works as well what are the fans in for with the new one um yeah the, the material's there uh, it's just down to um it's, it's time to put it down on record but basically um we, we're pretty much booked up until the end of this year although there's a there's a month i think um just before christmas and some of january and then all next year, uh, we're, we're pretty much touring, you know, up until the fall at, at least. Um, but then we can, you know, we can put our shoulders to the wheel and and, uh, and, and get it down on record for real, you know. And I know uh, Glenn Tipton's still very involved with the writing, which is awesome. And uh, you, you think maybe this new album's going to be out maybe sometime next year? Uh, yeah, the, the, well, maybe the year after. Uh, you, you have to leave it up, you know, give it a bit of breathing space. <laughs> we, we, we let the dust settle from uh, from, from the 50th um, anniversary. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's possible. It's possible towards the end of next year. But if not, it'll be um, uh, 23. Yeah, I think nowadays everyone is just um, kind of moving so quickly that when something gets released, everyone loves it for you know a couple of weeks, and then they're waiting for something new. It's everyone, No one has a chance yeah. to really slow down, I guess. Yeah, yeah, well, it, I mean, it's the way we've done things over the last 50 years, you know, and we're probably too long in the tooth to start changing things now. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, uh, Judas Priest is back in Minneapolis uh, September 23rd at the Armory, and it's uh, going to be great to see you guys again. Is there anything else maybe in the works that we should be looking out for? Uh, no, the show's great. There's some great surprises uh, in the production, um, as, as well as the, uh, you know, the songs that we haven't played for a while. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you guys, you know. Can't wait to get out there and, uh, and strut our stuff. <laughs> awesome. Again, uh, Ian, I am such a huge fan of yours, and I have been for most of my life. And uh, it's been an honor speaking with you today. Thank you so much. Oh, anytime. It's been a pleasure. See you in a few days. See you, Dustin. <laughs> Bye. Right. And again, that was the one and only Ian Hill of Judas Priest. And they'll be at Minneapolis coming up September 23rd at the Armory.